Hi, good morning, and hi, good morning, and welcome to today's products in focus. Um, I will start off with the US thirty, but let's talk about dollar ruble, which uh, seems to be all over all the news today. Uh, after the uh, Bank of Russia uh, unexpectedly raised rates to seventeen percent, so it's a six and a half percent jump overnight. Now, what's really, really interesting about this? Uh, we had a ten percent increase yesterday, and obviously this is due to the. The slide in the oil prices really hurting the um, the ruble. Also, capital fly out of the country, uh, and Brent crude has actually broke below sixty dollars for the first time. Um, West, West Texas is at fifty four dollars this morning, um, and we actually had a complete reversal uh, on on dollar ruble, uh, gapping much lower uh, and moving all the way down to just below sixty. Um, now this pretty much took out the entire ten percent gain from yesterday but it's been pushed right back up. So this looks to be quite an aggressive trading action right here. Um, and one that's really gonna be, I'm sure, surprising the, um, the the Russians because to have such a staunch sell-off on the back of a 70% you know, interest rate, it's incredible to do, that, to do this overnight. Uh, I feel sorry for anybody who's just about to uh, get their mortgage resorted out or borrow money in Russia right now. But um, certainly the thought is that people wouldn't wanna send more money out of the country if they're getting 17% interest rates. But anyway, look at this, we're almost getting pushed back into it's obviously not positive territory because this gap lower this morning, but um, it's, a, it's a huge turnaround and it's something that must be really concerning to, to the Russians. So there, there might be a lot of political reasons why this, why this is happening and um, obviously the, the, the rise in interest rates was to stop exactly this from happening. Um, but you know, when the sharks smell the blood in the water, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up pushing all the way back up to here uh, by the end of the day, but it's costing somebody a lot of money to do this. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. So that's dollar ruble big story today. Um, then obviously looking at um, the at the Dow, horrible, horrible candle yesterday off the session lows, cap at 55 pure decimal. We managed to muster a really small gain this morning, but it doesn't look good. I'm looking at the Germany 30 and the UK 100 and Japan 55, and they're all struggling this morning. We're a good bit away from potential uh, resistance at 17,361, but we are a long way away from any potential support level. So if there is continued pressure on the uh, equity markets, they have a long way to go before they reach anything remotely looking like support. So getting on to uh, the UK 100, the UK 100 had an absolute horror time yesterday. We actually reached all the way down this level here was 61.26, uh, which is probably about a 9% drop from just the 8th of December. So an incredible sell-off right there. Again, off the session lows, a small increase this morning, looking very shaky. 60.73 is the next potential support level, quickly followed by the next potential support level, which is round about 6,015. And that is the low of June uh, 2013. And um, I wouldn't, you know, if you go a little bit lower than that, you are a long way from home. So you can see the next potential support level is all the way down at 58.72 should this sell off continue. And uh, with crude oil still moving further south, um, UK oil companies are still, and energy and resource companies are still going to be under continued pressure. Um, so let's see how that how that moves on today. Um, Japan 225, another negative day, 16392. Um, but there's been a lot of yen buying as well. So you compounded the fact that Japan, the equity sell is happening, but people are buying the yen um, as a safe haven. Not so much gold, incidentally, uh, but certainly dollar yen has reversed course. Let's have a little look at that dollar yen. Um, again, bouncing off potential support 118, a break below that, and we we're trading below that 21 period SMA opens up 114.74. Now we have dipped below that uh, this morning. We've just managed to get our head right back above that level just now, but um, the trend certainly looks negative. So I wouldn't be that surprised if, we, if that support level is under pressure later on this morning. So West Texas crude, you can see we're firmly at 54.85 this morning. Uh, the next potential support level is all the way down at $35. The Saudis came out there yesterday or on Sunday evening saying that they're willing to support um, the, well, not willing to support, but they were happy to see the price of, um, of West, West Texas go from 60 to 50 to 40 if need be. Um, and that's obviously added a lot of pressure onto, uh, onto West Texas crude. Brent is below $60 for the first time in a long time. Um, we've not yet broken 54.85, but should we break and close below that? Um, and you have to go into a weekly chart to actually see this in a bit more 
detail. Let me just uh, try and zoom out if they're a little bit further. You can just see the massive gap we have between 54 and 35, and that would bring us right back down to the depths of the credit crunch. But then you can see how aggressive that sell-off was um, back in the day. It seems to be even more aggressive at the moment. So if we do break below that, I think that is going to be a cause of concern for people who are long crude oil. So moving on to gold, uh, gold is surprising um, by not having any form of rally when the yen has been well, well bid and say euro yen as well is the same. Um, but nobody seems to want to touch gold right now, even when the dollar is not doing a huge amount and people are trying to protect themselves. But then again, you do have the FOMC session uh, due tomorrow at 7 p.m. UK time. Uh, which could give some further clarity to um, what's going to be happening in America with interest rates. But the way things are right now, it would seem a little bit early to uh, to be talking about interest rates um, anytime uh, at the start of next year. But gold is selling off very strangely. But looking at 11.86, the next potential support level, uh, and the chart does not look that attractive. So moving on to euro dollar, uh, euro dollar's not really been doing too much uh, yesterday. Same with cable today, uh, still in the middle of two ranges. Potential resistance, one spot 25.79, and potential support, one spot 23.67. Uh, not a huge amount of economic data. Obviously, China disappointed again, only just though, contracting with their PMI figures. Uh, today, we do have a lot of data for the UK. We've got CPI and PPI. Um, we've got the ZEW business report, um, which uh, is probably not going to be that great, incidentally, but you never know. Moving on to GBP USD, uh, it did come off a bit more strongly yesterday, actually. Um, and we are looking at one spot 55.90 or one spot 56 is the next potential support. We're trading below both moving averages. Technical indicators are neutral, uh, indicating there could be further to go, especially if these CPI and PPI numbers disappoint. But hopefully, uh, hopefully the UK is doing better than some other um, countries out there. And we've also got the RPI as well. So there's a huge um, array of UK data at 9.30 and then the ZEW business report at 10. And that one usually is very significant. And the forecast was 20. The previous was 11.5. I'll be massively surprised if we if we get anywhere near 20 today, bearing in mind that we've had quite a lot of misses recently uh, on a lot of the big macro data releases. Fast forwarding on to Wednesday, we've got more UK data, and then we've got CPI in the US, and that obviously that huge FOMC session at 7 p.m. UK time tomorrow. Keep your eye on the chart forum as ever. Make insights part of your layout going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened.